On Memorial Day, we commemorate those who have died in military service to our nation. It is an opportunity to not only pay our respect to those that have given the ultimate sacrifice to our country and to reflect on how they help defend our country and our way of life. It is also a time to thank all of those who stand ready today to sacrifice their lives for us and the families and communities that support them. By understanding the magnitude of the sacrifice of all of these patriots, Memorial Day is a time to reflect upon what each of us will do with the opportunities and freedom that the sacrifices of these men and women make available to us. It offers each of us a chance to renew our commitment to take the time and effort to build a nation that these patriots would be proud of. Even though Memorial Day was first celebrated after the Civil War, my own memory of this critically important day was shaped from a young age by the stories of World War II told to me by my father and his brothers, all of whom fought in that great conflict. Tom Brokaw rightly noted in his book, The Greatest Generation, that these men and women came of age during the Great Depression and the Second World War and went on to build modern America. From my perspective, it was their massive sacrifice and that of their families and communities, as well as our allies, it is the single greatest contribution to the world in which we live today, including the relative economic prosperity and amazing quality of life that we enjoy here at home today. As I talked with members of this heroic generation, <clears throat> I heard stories of men and women in their early 20s who were willingly went to war, risking life and limb to save our way of life. They dropped in behind enemy lines in foreign lands, and often fought for the freedom of people they did not know. It is difficult for us today, even in the challenges of the current environment, to imagine the sheer magnitude of the problems that generation collectively faced. Yet faced them they did, and they were victorious. It was that spirit coming out of World War II that really drove our economy to new heights and made America the beacon of hope that it became in the decades that followed. At the same time, the patriots who had served our nation overseas returned to civilian life with a commitment to go beyond what seemed possible, to do the impossible, and to see that type of success as normal. General MacArthur captured this very sentiment in his famous speech at West Point in May 1962, saying, duty, honor, country. Those three hallowed words reverently dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, what you will be. They are your rallying points to build courage when courage seems to fail, to regain faith when there seems to be little cause for faith, to create hope when hope becomes forlorn. Like many that served with me in the modern post-World War II, post-Vietnam military, General MacArthur's words rang true. They were the values and belief that shaped my generation and set us on a path to redefine our military across service lines and seal ourselves for the ongoing fight in the global war on terrorism. When I was asked why I stayed in the military for so long, the words came easily. It was to work with people who had the same values, who sought to protect our nation, and who were willing to sacrifice their time, effort, and potentially their lives to defend our nation and to sustain our way of life. In many ways, the frontline responders fighting the pandemic in cities, counties, and states across the U.S. today, and indeed across the world, share these same beliefs and values. The conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan have gone on for nearly two decades. Today's military members have thus been in combat longer than those who served in World War II, and many have individually served for a half decade or longer in combat zones. Over 7,000 servicemen and women have given the ultimate sacrifice in these wars. The key question today for us as a nation is how we commemorate their sacrifice that these generations of, pet, of patriots have made for us. Without question, we should take this day to plant a flag, decorate their graves, say a prayer, and directly convey our thanks to those who serve and their families who likewise bear the burdens of their service in order to let all know that their sacrifice 
is not forgotten. But there is more that we can and we should do. We must make these patriots proud by using the opportunity that they have given us through their sacrifice to build a better, more just America for the generations to come. When the generations came back from World War II, they built America to what it is today. We must do the same in this generation. We must do so now as we begin to come out of this immediate moment of darkness. We must put aside our differences, political, economic, and social, and step up to build the America our future generations need and deserve. I know that is what my father and his brothers would have wanted. It is the reason I serve. I want each one of these men and women to be able to look down upon us and know that they gave the ultimate sacrifice for something that mattered. I want them to be proud of us as a nation. Let's make them proud.